Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to do some soul searching with Hawaii attorney James Lee. Our soul searching will concern current events in South Korea, from the practice of law to the coronavirus to domestic politics and international relations. James Lee understands the important issues facing South Korea and its citizens based upon his unique personal experiences and relationships. He grew up in Hawaii, but James lived and worked as a lawyer in South Korea for 10 years before returning to Hawaii where he now lives and practices law. James, welcome, aloha, good to see you. How are you? Same to you, same to you, sir. Aloha. Well, well, tell me, what is uh, a Korean word for aloha? I guess uh, it would be like saying hi, how are you? Uh, which you would you would mean, 안녕하세요. Okay. Or either that or glad to see you. 반갑습니다. 감사합니다. Okay. All right. Well, before we get into current events in Korea, let, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Uh, you know, you were, you were born in Hawaii and grew up here, but how, how did you learn Korean and how did you get to Korea for 10 years? Uh, no, I actually, I was uh, born in Korea. Oh, born in Korea. And my okay. family, my family came to Hawaii back in 72 when I was a seventh grader. Okay. So I grew up oh, here, right. I went to junior high school, high school, some college, and I decided to uh, go to California and finish my college there. So ended up getting my BA from, uh, UC Berkeley in uh, political science and, uh, you know, with the uh, emphasis on uh, Northeast Asian politics of all things. Oh, okay. So uh, covering China, uh, Japan, and Korea. And uh, after that, I uh, went to uh, UCLA Law School and worked and practiced law there for almost 20 years before the uh, IMF came along, Asian financial crisis, as they call it. And they had a need for uh, Korean speaking attorneys. So I ended up there working initially at the uh, Samuel PwC Price Waterhouse Coopers, uh, and then eventually for law firm, Harden Law Firm in Korea. And after 10 years, I decided enough of Korea for me. I want to go back to Hawaii, to my hometown. So I've been back 10 years now. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So you, so actually, you were born in Korea. That's your background, and and. I guess that you, you you learned Korean when you were a young young child, and then and then uh, is that what you spoke in your family home? Is that uh, pretty much? And then also when I was an undergraduate at Berkeley, we had a lot of uh, uh, graduate students from Korea on national scholarship, and I hung out with them, so I picked up a lot of Korean then. And of course, having worked in Korea for ten years, you also uh, I, I had a chance to not only brush up but uh, you know, uh, furnish, uh, burnish my Korean language skills, of course. Okay, and so, and, and and you liked Hawaii a little bit more. You wanted to come back here and live and work. Oh and... no, 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 not a not a little bit more, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> for for me, uh, you know, Hawaii is my uh, home state, hometown. I, I I grew up here and spent my formative years here, so uh, this is a home to me. Okay, and and. You, you're back here practicing law for 10 years now. What type of law do you uh, do? Is it Korea oriented or? I No, I actually, I'm not doing anything similar to what I was doing back in Korea. Uh, you know, international business transactions, et cetera. But I, I'm, right now I'm just mostly doing what you would call a general practice. Okay. A little bit of uh, just about everything. Immigration law, real estate law, a little bit of a living trust, and liquor license, et cetera. And, and do you, uh, you still have a lot of connections in Korea, uh, friends and, and colleagues? Uh, uh, you, yes, you... I do. In fact, uh, you know, my 10 years uh, spent in Korea is uh, actually uh, beginning to uh, bear fruits in that yeah. I do have an extensive network back in Korea, and, you know, having worked with the uh, major accounting firm and also major law firm. So through that connection, I'm getting a lot of referrals, actually. And, and your language helps, I guess, in that respect. Uh, the oh, yes, to, definitely. 
Um, Definitely. And and it, 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 you 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 practice different type of law here, but is is the the profession the same in Korea as in Hawaii, or is it different in some way? Oh no, it's a, it is a very different. I mean, the legal culture there is uh, just totally different in the. Uh, the Korean legal system is very much somewhat very similar to Japanese in that their legal educational system and legal system, I think, is caters, is set up there to uh, produce, uh, you know, future judges and prosecutors instead of, uh, uh, you know, having lawyers engage in uh, transactional work and advisory work. So there are uh, you know, legal system and legal education system is very different than legal culture too. In fact, uh, I'm sure it's probably the same case in Japan. And when 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 I was working in Korea, they would not even let you call a foreign attorney. They insisted that you call yourself a foreign legal consultant, FLC. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that, their that's, passage rate is like two three percent. Yeah. That sounds like, uh, yeah, that does sound very similar to what I know about uh, Japan and uh, how that works. Okay, now I want to focus a little bit on current events uh, in, in South Korea. And uh, there's a lot of things happening in South Korea and we yes, don't hear about it. Definitely. You know, you know we, don't, we don't hear so much here, I mean, we, despite our connections. So I want you to tell us, I mean, for, I mean, of course, everybody is talking about the coronavirus, uh, it, it, you know, but, but what happened in Korea? G give us, can you give us a kind of an update of, of Korea, well, what the situation is, what's happened, how, you know, what's going on and what, where we are now? Right now, the, uh, the, the situation in Korea, as far as uh, coronavirus is concerned, is uh, pretty uh, serious in that Unlike other countries, especially such as the U.S., uh, the Korean government did not stop travelers from uh, ch uh, from China from coming in uh, right away, and they let they're still doing so in that they continue to let Chinese nationals come into Korea, and also you do have a lot of a uh, Korean contingent business people working and living in China who goes back and forth. And because uh, there was no uh, initial strict restriction of uh, people coming into Korea from China, uh, there's been a, a rather very fast and rampant spread of uh, coronavirus in Korea. Mm, so the government, although they're handling it, uh, a lot of people feel that the, uh, the current government, uh, current administration of uh, Moon Jae-in uh, they made a big mistake allowing that to happen. So now uh, they're trying to fix the problem after the fact, and a lot of people are very upset about it. And there's going to be a upcoming uh, congressional uh, election in on April 15 next month. So they, a lot of people are predicting that the uh, the current current administration of uh, President Moon, uh, they're going to take a real terrible beating. So, so uh, when they, they, they knew about the coronavirus in China, but they still let people come in. They, they didn't put any sort of restrictions. Are, are there restrictions now? Has that changed? Or what, what, what are they doing well, now to, to combat the coronavirus? The, uh, well, there are more restrictions now, but uh, still a lot of people feel that they should have been an outright ban from the from the very beginning to uh, get a handle on this problem. Mm. And for whatever reason, uh, you know, the government, the President Gov uh, Moon's government claims that the, uh, the reason they cannot you know, uh, impose such a restrictive measure is that because of the uh, you know, concern for the economy and that uh, they're afraid that the, <laughs> there may be a backlash from China, but uh, you know, China itself doing it internally, so I, I don't I don't really understand why the Chinese government would try to punish the Korean government for doing what it what a government is supposed to do in that protecting its people. First, yeah. I mean you know 
safety and health of the uh, your people is first before economy. Yeah, and, you would and, think. and so the present government, uh, it, it sounds like a lot of the citizens of South Korea are saying the present government uh, did a poor job of balancing. They, uh, they, they, they were looking at the economics and not the health. Uh, correct, but uh, I, I have a, you know, some, I have my own pet, pet theory that the reason the current government of uh, Moon Jae-in is doing what they're doing with the, as far, in, in, uh, relating to the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, diplomatic relationship with the, uh, China is because of the, uh, uh, their concern for South Korea's relationship with uh, North Korea in particular, because uh, China does have a, a substantial influence over the North Koreans. Oh. So they think by being nice to North Ch Chinese government, they're in turn indirectly helping uh, their attempt to uh, you know, have a rapprochement with the uh, North Korea in, in some ways. So there's another angle to that. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, so is, is, you know, what is the situation in Seoul right now? What do you hear from your friends and colleagues? What, what is it like to live there? Is it getting any better? Is it improving or, or not? Or, or do, are we getting, I mean, can you get the right facts? Uh, yes, you are, because uh, there's still, uh, you know, nowadays you cannot stamp out uh, the facts from getting out uh, totally. Uh, unlike China, you know, the, uh, the, there's a SNS network that's still thriving. And also you have a lot of uh, YouTubers who is free to uh, upload information. And it seems that a lot of people are just, just basically scared to go out and engage in economic activity. So people refrain themselves from going out, uh, you know, intermingling with the other people. And so they're just pretty much keeping to themselves at home. Uh, and with the, uh, this particular uh, explosion, so to speak, of a coronavirus cases in Tegu, which is uh, one of the uh, largest, perhaps third largest city uh, in, the, uh, in Korea, uh, in, in one of the uh, Gyeongsang province, uh, that place is just literally, uh, without imposing actual quarantine, the whole, the whole city has become locked down wow. in Daegu. Daegu. Oh, it, you know, okay, now, if, if you were advising President Trump, what would you tell him that we can learn from what happened in South Korea or, or the way to handle this? I guess he did the right thing in that, uh, you know, he, uh, as soon as uh, the, uh, the coronavirus broke out in China, he stopped visitors from coming in from China. Uh, mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, preparation, we're just totally under underprepared in that we're not ready to deal with the coronavirus in this country. I mean, to begin with, we don't even have uh, enough testing kit to test people to find out whether they have a coronavirus or not. So we're not even at the beginning stage of a pre preparation, as far as I can tell. And, and that's the, that is the current uh, situation in Seoul and South Korea generally, and, and Daegu sounds worse. Oh no, uh, they, are, they, are, they have been mobilizing and mobilizing fast enough. So now the, uh, there's been a rapid decline of uh, new cases. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's a fortunate thing, but uh, uh, I think initially the Korean government made a big mistake, not not intervening fast enough to stop people from coming in and going okay. back and forth between China and Korea. Yeah. All right. I, I, we're we're, we're going to take a one minute break right now, and uh, when okay. I come back, I want to talk about North Korea. Uh, you you mentioned that, and I want to kind of go in a little deeper now. Uh, but anyway, we'll we'll be okay. back in a minute. One minute. Yep. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. 
And I'm the host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We're on every Wednesday at four o'clock, and we hope that we have interesting uh, guests who talk to us about various energy things that are happening in Hawaii, all the way from PV to windmills to hydrogen, close to my heart, electric buses and electric vehicles. So please dial in every Wednesday at four o'clock on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Aloha. We are back with James Lee doing some soul searching, talking about Korea. Uh, we've been talking about the coronavirus in South Korea and, and James, uh, what, what, do, what do you think or what do you hear from your friends and colleagues about the status of North Korea and the coronavirus? I mean, uh, what we hear on the news is that everything's fine. And is, is that the truth? I mean, they, they have connections with China, as you mentioned. That couldn't possibly be true. Uh, they're doing a good job of uh, blocking any information from getting out of Korea. But even then, we have uh, like well over 30,000 people who uh, uh, fled North Korea one way or the other. And they now reside in South, uh, South Korea. And they have got their families and connections back in North Korea. And according to them, they're like almost probably close to 7,000 people who are locked up, who's uh, suspected of uh, having coronavirus symptoms. Uh, so that cannot be true that they have no known case of a coronavirus. And especially in light of the fact that up until the uh, sudden closure of the borders between North Korea and China, uh, there were a lot of uh, back and forth uh, uh, business people going back and forth a lot of trading and, you know, buying, uh, importing stuff from China, bringing into Korea and, and then selling, reselling them in, in North Korea. So there were a lot of interaction between uh, people and two countries. So it, it cannot, it, it cannot be that there's no coronavirus cases in North Korea. There has to be at least some. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just, yeah, it, it's hard to believe. Uh, and, and, and yet, at the same time, North Korea is launching missiles. And what, what, what's, is that a part of their strategy also? Or what, what is that all about? And how did the South Koreans feel about it? Well, South Koreans has become, I guess, uh, I don't know, desensitized. I don't know whether that's the correct word, but uh, very desensitized over the decades of, uh, you know, having this... Uh, tension, military tension with the North Korea. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are just used to it. And, and their attitude, the people in South Korea, their attitude is that, oh, here, here they go again, sort of attitude. But uh, uh, I guess uh, they're North Koreans, they're uh, kind of angry that the uh, nothing came out of uh, two meetings that <laughs> the uh, President Trump had with uh, Kim Jong-un. And they were hoping that the uh, United States and the UN would ease up on sanctions, but that hasn't happened. So they're ticked off, and with all this coronavirus crisis, they're, they're, they're kind of their issue with the denuclear denuclearization of what uh, you know North Korean uh, nuclear weapon has has put on the back burner. So they're trying to <laughs> get some attention, I guess, uh, by you know, shooting off lobbing uh, new missiles. And and but, but I mean, notice they are very careful not to not to uh, uh, launch any long miss long long what is it, long distance missiles that may approach Hawaii or, or, or mainland mainland U.S. They're just sticking with the short ones because uh, between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong Un, I guess they have an implicit understanding that so long as they're lobbing or launching short 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 range missiles, uh, it's not threatening to U.S. So. Uh, I guess uh, you know we have our military exercise between Korean Korean uh, military and, and U.S. So I guess they can have their you know launching of a short missile. So we just uh, I, that that's the situation. So it, it sounds like Kim Jong Un wants to get some attention. Um, it, it just it's it just sounds weird. 
and and what, what oh, no, did no. The... actually getting i'm sorry uh getting attention for him is critical at this point because mm. uh, because of the coronavirus nothing is getting in <laughs> uh, their situation their hardship is getting worse and worse by the day uh, you know so they're in a dire situation so unless he gets he's able to draw some attention on them and 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 have some kind of aid from outside the uh, you know they may be in danger of uh, implosion so of course uh, he needs to get attention one way or the other I see. Any way he can. What 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 do uh, the people of South Korea think about Kim Jong Un and 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 his sister and the possibility of reunification? Is this, I mean, what what is the real feelings that your friends and colleagues tell you about all of those well, things? There are still substantial number of uh, people who are from North and who as a family members in North Korea, uh, such as myself. I may have uh, two, my father's two younger brothers still uh, may be, uh, uh, you know, alive in North Korea, although I never met them. So there's clearly a concern and, 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 and this uh, eagerness to somehow achieve reunification between two, two Koreas. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we've been at this for, what, last seven decades? since the end of Korean War. And I just don't think that the uh, the North Koreans are really interested in uh, uh, two Koreas becoming unified because they realize that uh, given, given two Korea's current situation, I think every North Korean would offer the uh, South Korean model if they were to become unified under, you know, under one system, everybody in the North would prefer and offer the uh, South Korean model. So North Koreans, although they give a lip service to reunification, I don't think they're serious enough in that they just don't want to open up. They're not even uh, allowing people to go back and forth and let the uh, family members meet freely. They, uh, they're being as restrictive as possible so that the, uh, the North Koreans in North Korea, they have a minimum access to outside world. And, and so I see, so uh, really whatever, it, it almost doesn't matter what, what I hear, what South Koreans feel because North Korea, you don't think they are, they are legitimately thinking about re reunification. That's, that's not a, a real goal. No, the, uh, their real goal is for the survival of the regime. Mm -hmm. That's their main goal and only goal. Yeah. Uh, so I personally doubt that they'll ever give up nuclear weapon because it's their only insurance policy they have. Yeah. And what, what is the role of Kim Jong-un's uh, sister in all of this? Uh, you, you see her every so often making comments. And it, 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 in, what, what, what is she doing? In fact, uh, she uh, did not appear on any, uh, she did not make the news in the last couple of months. And all of a sudden, her, uh, she came on North Korean news and started making some harsh criticism against the uh, the South Korean government and which she never did before and there are some uh, commentators and pundits who are saying that it may be because uh, Kim Jong-un's health is is, is is in serious condition so that he's putting his sister in front so that he can stay back and uh, you know take care of his medical problems uh, and in fact, uh, her role seems to be uh, getting bigger and bigger, and she's becoming more influential mm. in North Korean politics. Now, there, there's also a, a dispute between South Korea and uh, Japan. What's that about? Uh, it goes it goes back only 1,300 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. I, I, to me, I mean, uh, this uh, this uh, and antagonistic relationship between Korea and Japan it just just goes way back and way 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 deep seated but uh, uh, I feel like if you just let the uh, two peoples you know let two peoples alone they'll get along just fine especially the younger generation post-war yeah. generation yeah. Uh, they don't seem to have any problem getting along people in their 20s 30s it's the uh, for me in my personal view, 
history of the old politicians in their 70s and 80s in Korea and also in, in, in Japan, uh, you know, who's just playing the uh, this, this so-called, uh, you know, the anti-colonialism colonialism card and, and, and vice versa. Uh, it's just very unfortunate. Uh, that, that, that sounds like good advice. Let people, let, let it be. Yeah. yeah, because the young people, they have no, uh, you know, memory of uh, uh, Korea having been colonized mm -hmm. during the early 1900s. And of course, uh, with the uh, end of uh, World War II, Korea became a, a liberated country, nation. And people in their 2030s, they don't remember anything about the war and they have uh, no animosity towards each other. It's just that the, the old people, they just prolonging and uh, prolonging the uh, problem between two countries and animosity. So you, you mentioned, I mean, you know, there's lots going on in Korea. You got elections coming up. Uh, you have this, you know, this long going dispute with Japan and North Korea and all these things. Where, what are your thoughts? Where are we going? Where, what is the future for South Korea and Seoul as we do our soul searching? What, what, what are your feelings uh, in the minute we have left? What, okay. what are your my feelings? My feeling is that, unfortunately, uh, the, uh, it's, it's just my personal opinion, but uh, uh, I, I consider myself, you know, on, on, on a political spectrum, moderate, moderate or a little bit to the left of the middle. But uh, the, uh, the current government in Korea, uh, I don't know where they are. I guess they're far left. Uh, they uh, they have taken the uh, position of uh, what a lot of Koreans in Korea, South Korea, feel that too much of a pro Chinese and pro North stance uh, compared to uh, you know the, uh, the pro U.S. and somewhat pro uh, China, uh, Japanese position that the uh, the previous administration administrations used to have. So uh, I think there's going to be a substantial change and then shift in policy once the uh, new Congress is elected in, after the uh, April 15. Okay. I think we're going to see more balanced uh, position taken even by the lame duck, you know, President hmm. Moon's uh, <clears throat> administration. They have no choice. Well, you know, that'll be very interesting to see. April 15th is a big date uh, and we'll, we'll look forward to that. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate your insights into the current situation in, in Korea, in South Korea. And uh, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. You know, thank you, James. Sure. Thank you. Uh, hope uh, we can do this again. Yeah, well, we'll may, may, maybe we'll do an update. How's that? Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right, James. Thank you very much. Aloha, everybody. All right.